This is lesson 3 of unit 10. In this lesson, we'll take a look at a feature of stoichiometry called limited or limiting reactants. Uh, this will require some stoichiometry calculations, and so we'll have to review those as we go along. So, first of all, let's define some terms. The first term is uh, excess reactant, and the second one is a limiting reactant. When you have a reaction in which more than one reactant is present, and the example here is with s'mores, you need three reactants to produce a s'more. One of the reactants will be the limiting reactant, and the other reactant or reactants will be in excess. So what this means, the excess reactant is the reactant that you have too much of and which does not run out. Whereas the limiting reactant is the one that does run out, it's the one that runs out first, and it limits how much product will be formed. So the idea here is, uh, think if we had 10 pieces of graham crackers, think if we have 20 pieces of uh, marshmallows and only six pieces of chocolate. What happens is, we'll, and we'll assume that th this is one piece of chocolate, from these ingredients we can only form two s'mores because the chocolate limits us. So chocolate will be the limiting reactant and then the next two, or the, la uh, the uh, graham crackers and the marshmallows will all be excess, excess reactants. Excess. So that's kind of the idea. We're going to apply this idea to chemical equations. So let's go ahead and start it. We'll begin with a simple example of this. Here we have a very simple equation. One carbon plus one oxygen gives you one CO2. The question is, which is the limiting reactant if you begin with these quantities? If you begin with two moles of carbon and two and a half moles of oxygen? Well, carbon is the limiting reactant here. So this is the answer, because we have less carbon to begin with, so we'll form less of the carbon dioxide. And this is very logical, this is uh, very simple, so this is the limiting, and then this would be the excess. In fact, you can probably calculate how much excess will be left, and that's this much. Okay, let's try a second example. This example is similar, except it's a different equation. Here we have one oxygen for two hydrogens producing two waters. Which is the limiting reactant if we begin with two moles of oxygen and three moles of hydrogen? In this case, the limiting reactant is hydrogen. This is the limiting. And this is the excess. Now this is strange because we have more hydrogen to begin with, but it turns out to be the limiting. And this is because more hydrogen is required. You need two times as much hydrogen for the reaction than you need oxygen. So the lesson here is this. You can't simply take a look at these starting numbers and see whichever one forms or whichever one is less. Uh, because here we have more of the hydrogen, but it turned out to be the limiting. We're going to teach you here the method for solving these limiting reactants. So here is how we would find a limiting reactant. We would first convert the given amounts of each reactant to the amount produced of one product. So find out how much product can be made from both the given amounts. Whichever one produces less then is the limiting reactant, which makes sense in the case of the s'mores. The chocolate, remember, produced only two s'mores, so the chocolate is the limiting reactant. The other ones are excess reactants. Okay, so why don't we try and work out a few problems. We'll do two problems. Problem number one says you have 1.5 moles of NH3 and 1.8 moles of O2. Which is the excess, or which is the limiting, and which is the excess reactant? So these are going to be our amounts that we'll be looking at. And let's go ahead and convert both of these to one of the products. It doesn't matter which product. Let's go ahead and use the first product. Let's convert them both to an O. And then whoever forms less will be our limiting. Okay? So that's our problem. Uh, so that's our, uh, how we're going to solve the problem. We'll have to do two stoichiometry calculations. We'll have to convert 1.5 moles of NH3 and we'll have to convert 1.8 moles of O2. Now let's convert both of these to our desired product, our selected product, and O. In this case, 
We'll convert from moles to moles. So we have moles of NH3, moles of NH3 down go below, go down below. And uh, moles of NO then would go on top. That's what we're trying to convert to. The relationship there is 4 to 4. And our answer is going to be the same, 1.5 moles of NH3. Let's do the same thing for oxygen. So we'll put moles of oxygen below and moles of NO. Notice we're converting to the same product in both cases. And we require 5 moles of O2 to produce 4 moles of NO. In this case, go ahead and do the calculation. We got ourselves 1.8 times 4 divided by 5 which gives us 1.44 moles of NH3. So at this point, we take a look at which produced less. So this number is less, which means that our limiting reactant is this guy here. This is our limiting reactant. Okay, now the limiting reactant will always be the starting substance. So oxy oxygen, then, is the limiting reactant. Really, we should say O2 is the limiting reactant for our uh, final answer. OK, so hopefully this makes sense. We took both of our given amounts. We converted to one of the products. And then the product that formed less was our limiting. The reactant that formed less was our limiting. OK, why don't we try one more? In this case, the numbers will be a little more complex, but uh, a similar idea. Here it says you have 35 grams of NH3 and 65 grams of O2, which is the limiting, which is the excess. Same story. Let's go ahead and convert both of our reactants, 35 grams of NH3 and 65 grams of O2. Now the question is, what do we convert it to? Well, one of the products. It doesn't matter which. Last time we converted to this product. Let's go ahead and do water in this case. Now, do we convert to moles or do we convert to grams of water? Turns out it doesn't matter. It's actually easier to convert to moles of water, so I would encourage you to convert to moles unless specifically you're asked to convert to grams. So because I'm going from grams of one substance to moles of another, this is an episode two. This will require two steps for us to convert. Same thing here, two steps in both cases. Okay. Let's convert from grams first of NH3 to moles of NH3. And one mole of NH3 weighs 17.03 grams. Then we'll have to convert from moles of NH3 to moles of one of our products. Let's go ahead and choose water. So we'll do H2O here. So six moles of H2O are produced from four moles of NH3 based on the balanced equation. Let's do the same thing for oxygen. We have grams of oxygen down here, mole of oxygen. A mole of oxygen is 32 grams. And then we have moles of oxygen down here, and then moles of the same product, water, up here. And we have six moles of water produced from five moles of oxygen. So let's go ahead and do the top calculation. We have 35 divided by 1703 times 6 divided by 4, which gives us 3.08 moles of water. If we do the same thing for the bottom, go ahead and do this with me. 65 divided by 32 times 6 divided by 5. We get 2.44 moles of H2O. So which is our limiting reactant? Well, our limiting reactant that produced less is this guy here. So oxygen is, again, our limiting reactant. reactant. There we are. Now, you'll notice that we began with more of the oxygen than we did of the NH3. And this is very often the case. You begin with more of it, but it's still the limiting reactant. That's because you require more of it you could say. Okay? And this, by the way, then, is the, if I were to ask you for the excess reactant, you would say NH3 is the excess reactant. 
all right? Hopefully this makes sense. Actually pretty simple, um, not a big deal. Now this can be applied in many different ways and become a little more complex. So go ahead and practice a few and we will do some problems in class. So practice uh, this one, pause it, try this one on your own. Pause it, try this one on your own as well. And we will see you, this is the end of lesson three.